A pregnant Georgia teenager goes missing and is tracked down by her family using her cell phone location. But unfortunately, she isn't found alive. And police now have somebody in custody, but not the way you may think. We're breaking down this case with Georgia criminal defense attorney, Lauren Zimmerman. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Police in Loganville, Georgia, which is about 30 miles east of Atlanta, are investigating the death of a pregnant 16-year-old girl. This after her family discovered her body in a wooded area in Gwinnett County. The teen was reportedly seven months pregnant. This is according to her family, which they told Univision Atlanta. Mia Campos's family says the teen left home sometime the night of July 14th with someone but never returned home. They say they tracked her cell phone in the hopes of finding her. And according to a news release from Gwinnett Police at around 1 a.m. on July 15th, her family called 911, saying they had discovered Mia's body by tracking her phone location through a phone app. Initially at the scene, investigators were unable to determine how Mia died, but after an autopsy the next day, her death was ruled a homicide. However, investigators have not released her exact cause of death. So there's a difference between manner of death and cause of death. The following day, July 17th, police arrest 20-year-old Jesus Monroy, who they describe as Mia's ex-boyfriend and charged him with providing false statements to a police officer during the investigation into Mia's slang. But there is no word on any further charges directly related to Mia's death. In other words, he is not charged with murder or manslaughter or anything like that as of yet. Now, officials have not said if Monroy is the father of Mia's baby, though Mia's family confirmed to local media that he is. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports the baby was going to be named Sebastian. A motive in this killing? remains under investigation, as well as trying to understand who exactly did this. Authorities told local CBS Atlanta affiliate WANF that Monroy is actually not the only suspect that investigators are looking into. The Campos family has also started a GoFundMe page to raise money for expenses, and her mother, identified as Miriam on the GoFundMe listing, writes, quote, Mia, my daughter, the girl of my eyes, my baby, has passed away with her son in her belly. I ask God to watch over her and her baby. Now she and my grandson are in heaven with God. With all my heart, I ask you for help to give her and her baby a dignified burial. Thanks. May God take care of you and bless you and your entire family. A service was held a week after the discovery of Mia's remains on July 22nd to lay the 16-year-old to rest. All right, so joining me right now to talk about this is criminal defense attorney Lawrence Zimmerman, who's out in Georgia. Uh, Lawrence, thanks so much for coming on. Really, really chilling case. Uh, tough to talk about this one. Um, are you surprised, though, that Mr. Monroy uh, has not been charged with Mia's death at this point, only with falsifying statements? Well, I mean, listen, obviously it's pretty significant, you know, case, there's a death, but the police are going to do their investigation so they can make sure they make the the right arrest, right? That's what you want. And, and, and by the way, to be clear, right, at the time of this recording, he hasn't been charged. That could change. I guess I, one of the first things that I thought about with that, wouldn't it make it really difficult from a criminal defense perspective, if Monroy is charged with her death, wouldn't it be difficult for defense counsel to say, Hey, investigators, they had tunnel vision. They were only focused on him. This wasn't thoroughly investigated. The fact that they didn't initially charge him with murder, and by the way, they, they may not, um, or, or some sort of homicide-related crime. They may not, but assuming that they do, um, if they took the time and initially charged him with false statements, that would make it harder, I would think, for his defense counsel at a trial to convince the jury that this was uh, they, were, they were only looking at him. Well, sure, you couldn't stand up and say, this is a rush to judgment, right? I mean, that's the that's why you always want the police to do a thorough investigation. Even a thorough investigation would still be wrong, but certainly if they immediately charge someone with murder, defense could just say, this is a rush to judgment, it's tunnel vision, like you said, Jesse, and they got the wrong guy. 
Hey, everybody, I want to take a quick sidebar from Sidebar to tell you guys about Wondery's awesome podcast, American Scandal. You can listen right now and explore the biggest political corruption scheme in U.S. history. Using vivid and immersive storytelling, American Scandal retraces the bribes, players, and underhanded deals related to the Teapot Dome scandal. In 1922, newspapers reported that Secretary of the Interior Albert Fall had leased federally owned oil reserves to two of the nation's wealthiest oil barons, Edward Doheny and Harry Sinclair. Fall had made the deals to enrich himself, and all three men were charged with defrauding the U.S. government. The scandal, named after one of the oil reserves in Wyoming, would eventually send Sinclair to prison for contempt of Congress and jury tampering, and made Fall the first person ever convicted of a crime committed while serving in the U.S. cabinet. Follow American Scandal on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge this season, American Scandal Teapot Dome, early and ad-free right now at Wondery.fm. FM slash LC sidebar. So assuming the allegations are true, right, that he provided false statements to law enforcement, the question, of course, would be why would someone who had nothing to do with Mia's death, but potentially is the uh, child's father, why would he provide false statements to police unless, of course, he was involved in what happened to her? I mean, that's a million dollar question, right? But, you know, you're talking about human beings that aren't used to dealing with the police and maybe he was just trying to persuade them he had nothing to do with it. I mean, yeah, I mean, certainly it's a bad fact. I can't disagree. Why lie if you don't have a reason to lie? That's going to be a problem for him. But we don't know all the facts and and what what his side of the story may be if he has one. And again, we don't know why they came up with that charge, what he exactly said or didn't say. How does that charge uh, put pressure on him in terms of the overall case? Certainly, it would put pressure on him if he's charged with murder to explain away why he first lied. I mean, I have plenty of cases where the police will say, I spoke to so and so, um, and he lied to us. And then now, you know, you have a lie at the trial, and the, the prosecutions argue. If he had nothing to hide, if he didn't do this, why would he lie in the first place? Why didn't he just say, here's what happened? That's, that, that is a problem. I'm not, not, not sure the whole, what the whole lie really is and, and what evidence they have. That, that's part we don't know. Yeah, and speaking about what we don't know, do you find it unusual or is it common that at this point we don't have more information? What I mean by that is investigators seem to be very tight-lipped about certain details. Like, we don't even know the cause of death. We know the manner of death but that it was a homicide, but we don't know exactly her cause of death. Is that strange or is that typical in these kinds of cases? Well, a lot of times they're not going to release all the information to the public because and sometimes the police put misleading, misleading information out in the, in the public eye because they want to see if they get somebody else to say something that contradicts the evidence that they know. Um, they don't want to tip their hand too early and they may not have enough information yet. That's why they're not putting it out there. I mean, it's, all, it's hard to speculate to all the reasons, but there's all possibilities as to why. And what, what do you make of the where the body was disposed, right? I always ask this question because I think it's really interesting. If we're in the, the course of the investigation, we're not exactly sure who did this. This area, I, it's always about means and opportunity. Does someone have the ability to dump this body where they where they do? Or is it just this is the easiest place that somebody with those resources can dump a body? So the fact about where she was disposed, uh, what do you take away from that? You know, what's the distance from where he lives? What time of day? You know, what, you know, the police may be looking at, you know, um, street highway cameras trying to get surveillance to see if they see his car leaving at some point near that area. They're probably canvassing the area where she was found, which any houses or buildings facing the woods, you know, buildings have, everyone has a camera these days, right? So a lot of times the cops about canvas. We do that on the defense side, try to figure out where cameras are and to see what it picks up. So I'm sure they're doing that to see if his vehicle's picked up, if he's picked up. Um, maybe there's no cameras there, but that may be a lot of why they have not yet issued a warrant for his arrest because they're doing all that in the meantime to lock it down. And assuming for a moment that he is responsible or involved in what happened to Mia here, Typically, is that what you see in these kinds of cases in the sense that domestic cases, I mean, they weren't living together, but if he was the father of her child, this is somebody that police would sometimes look at? 
Sure. In all murder cases, the first person they're going to try to include or exclude is going to be the spouse, right? And so he may, may not be married, but he is, quote unquote, the spouse of her. They share a child together. So he would be the natural first suspect they would look into, right? Lawrence, one other quick question I have for you. Uh, if he's currently charged with this crime, uh, how long can they technically keep him, I don't know, locked up? Or how long can they keep him before they could upgrade to other kind of charges? Well, the problem that they're, they're going to run into is he's lawfully, I mean, there's no reason he shouldn't get bail. Um, he'll go in front of a judge, have initial appearance. They may deny it at the initial then a lawyer will schedule it for a bond hearing, probably be a couple of weeks in Gwinnett County, and I what's called also preliminary hearing. So if he doesn't get charged with the murder by then, um, it's pretty likely that he'll get grant, he'll have bond granted. I mean, the DA may argue we're investigating murder charges, but I would be adamant to the court. My my position is he's not charged with murder. He's only charged with false statements. So he shouldn't be sitting in jail. Unless and until there's a murder charge. And by the way, you could get a bond for murder charge, obviously less likely, but he's, only, he's not charged with murder yet. So if they want to keep him detained, they better hurry up and get those charges uh, filed. Well, we still don't have a lot of answers as to what happened or who he's even suspected of doing this, um, but we'll continue to follow it. Um, Lawrence Zimmerman, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse. And before I go, I want to add one more thing. Anybody with information on this case is asked to call GCPD detectives at 770-513-5300. You can also provide an anonymous tip at Crime Stoppers at 404-577-TIPS, or you can visit StopCrimeATL.com. All right, everybody, that's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.